Support for today's episode comes from Goalie. You already love them for their apple cider vinegar gummies, but they just launched a new vitamin gummy, Super Greens. And did you know that Goalie Super Green gummies contain vitamin A, an essential vitamin that supports a healthy immune system? They're sugar-free, keto-friendly, vegan-friendly, and another bonus, they're delicious too. As a Boonie Breakdown listener, you can receive 10% off your purchase by using the code Boonie Breakdown. Details on how to purchase can be found in the show notes and on the Boonie Breakdown. Com. Hey y'all, it's your girl Booney, and you're listening to the Booney Breakdown Podcast, your source for all things responsible and ratchet. Hey guys, welcome to episode 197 of the Booney Breakdown Podcast. I'm excited because it's always fun to have the people that you've met in real life on the pod. And so this week our guest is Eric of the Hung Up Podcast. He's based out of Philadelphia. We have a bomb conversation, guys. We talk about sexuality in the black families. He breaks down what's a top, bottom, a verse. It's educational. We also have a conversation about sexuality and the fluidness. Is sexuality on a spectrum? So you don't want to miss this one. It's fun. It's ratchet. It's educational. So stick around for the conversation. All right, let's hop right into Boonie's pick of the week. It's none other than Selling Sunset Season 4. Yes, it just came out on the 24th. Like I said, Mama Ratchet and I binged it on uh, pretty much on Thanksgiving because it's only half hour episodes. I love White Mess. I love it. Chriselle, Christine, Amans, all of them. I loved it. Um, I must say, spoiler alert. I'm fucking pissed that Davina is still on the show. I fucking hate her. Like, I literally hate Davina. <laughs> but this season, she didn't give me anything to hate her for. So I guess I'm going to have to take her off of my list. But if you want catty, white, rich, woman mess, white woman mess, go check out Selling Sunset. It's so good. I like the storyline that they built this year. And they set up for season five with everyone knowing um, the news that we saw in the tabloids about Jason and Chriselle. So, Sullen Sunset Season 4, my pick of the week. Housekeeping. Housekeeping. Come back later, please. Housekeeping. Not now. All right. Thank you guys for listening to last week's episode, episode 195. It was a solo episode with your girl, uh, Love, Money, and Consistency. So many of you have sent me messages about how much you two have been enjoying the show Love Life over on HBO Max. So if you have not watched that, please be sure to go ahead and binge that. Someone also said, Booney, let me know when you start this writing campaign for student loan forgiveness. I'm tired of paying the five and I am in with you for support. So thank you guys so much. It was a classic Boonie Spot 5. Not Spot 5. What the fuck? It's a five spot episode. So head on back to last week's episode and listen. Also, guys, there will be another YouTube video dropping this week. If you did not watch the last YouTube video, it was what is in Boonie's black-owned shopping bag. Head on over to YouTube and subscribe to the Boonie Breakdown there to check out the new videos. Also, Patreon gang, I know I owe you all details for a live event for December. So those will be dropping this week. So stick around for details in the portal. And if you are not a member of the official Patreon Ratcheteer gang, you can join at patreon.com backslash the Boonie Breakdown. Membership starts as low as $3 a month. All right, so be sure to join us there. If you're not following us on other social media, be sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook at The Boonie Breakdown. You can follow us at Twitter just at Boonie Breakdown. And when sharing this episode, be sure to tag us, put it in the Insta story, share the tweet, share the Facebook status, put it in your group chat, send it to your family members, let everyone know, and be sure to tag us. Use the hashtag The Boonie Breakdown, the hashtag pod, N P O D I N. All right, if you're still in the giving mood, you can leave us a five-star review over on the Apple Podcast app. Yep, that's the purple one. If you have any Apple device, iPhone, iPad, MacBook, all of those great things, you can hit those five stars. It helps us out so much and we appreciate it. So that is it for me. So let's get ready to break it down. Hey, 
Hey guys, it's your girl Booney, and I am excited for this week's episode, not only because he's saving my ass, but because he's just really a dope, a dope fun person. So welcome, Eric. What's up? What's up, Booney? Come on with this voice, though. Uh, (laughs) I don't know. You know what? People people love the voice, and I I got to tell them. But before puberty, it was the total opposite. I would call my mother's job and be like, yo, can I speak to Charlene? They'd be like, Charlene, your daughter's on the phone. Oh, no. <laughs> and puberty gotta... was terrible for me. I, like, I was one of those kids who the voice was cracking all the time. Oh, like, and everybody yeah. was laughing. And yeah, so, you know, the end result is this nice, you know, very it's white. husky and <laughs> it has texture. We love it. Thank you. Um, so good. I this always, I, I people have you listened to this podcast for a while. You've heard this story in it a couple times, but not in its entirety. And I always, I just have been waiting for the moment to have him on here to tell it because the way Eric and I met was at the Philly live show. And so yes. I know I've said this before. I've only done two shows outside of Baltimore, but I thought it would be cool as a way to connect with some other indie podcasts. I send like two or three invitations to some local podcasters in those cities. Hey, come see the show. Eric was one of those people. Yes. He comes to the show. He comes to the Philly Live show. And we was lit. We were, I was especially inebriated that day. Those drinks were mighty strong. And our Good. problematic fave says a very problematic comment, like he always does. <laughs> and our good friend here, Eric, uh-uh, <laughs> from the audience. <laughs> so they had some discourse for a moment. I was so inebriated, and it was the drinks it, were flowing. The drinks were flowing, and I was just looking like, "Oh my god, they about to fight!" <laughs> <laughs> Yo, no, I don't think it was going to get. It, it, we weren't going to fight, but... It was getting heated, though. I definitely was just like, nah, hold up, pause, like... And I think it, it was it was so good for Brian because for him to be challenged by you, I thought mm. that was great. Because he's used to me saying something, and he's used to... But for you to challenge him, I thought that was excellent, so... Oh, yeah, I be challenging people. That's kind of like my thing. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. So that is the story of how Eric and I met. In Shout out to Brian. <laughs> Our problematic, problematic fave. fave. Yes. <laughs> Where he at? He not here tonight. Where he at? Knowing him, he probably smoking a cigar somewhere, child. Being problematic. As always. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when I was on your podcast, yeah. you asked me two really good questions. And since then, I have been telling everyone this, this, like, you asked me, when did I know I was straight? Because <laughs> as a gay black man, you get that question and gay people get that question all the time. Yeah. And yeah. <clears throat> I tell people ever since I came on your podcast, that was the first time in my life anyone has ever asked me, when did you know you were straight? Mm-hmm. And in telling people that, yeah. It makes them think, and now they're like, oh, shit. Nobody's ever asked me that ever again. And I had someone say back to me, thank you for telling me that, mm-hmm. because I will never ask a gay person that again. Yeah, because it's like a very abstract thing to people who are not, who don't identify, you know, LGBTQ+. plus. But for us, it's just like our lives. Like, this is just all we know. Like, it's very normal to us. Mm-hmm. So... To get that question is kind of like, when did you make the decision to switch over? And it's just like, no, that's not the way that this thing works. And yeah, sometimes people discover or explore, open up their sexuality at different points of their lives. Um, That definitely does happen. You know what I mean? But for a lot of folks, it's like, look, I was a queer ever since I was on a kindergarten playground. Like, (laughs) I just knew I was different. Everybody else knew I was different and they treated yeah. me accordingly, you know? And it's it's true because I did say that to, I think it was my mom I was saying. And I was like, well, I think back to elementary school and I'm not going to say their names, but there were people that it's like, 
I didn't know what that was. Like, I didn't know what gay was. Right. right. But it was like, I knew he was gay. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or I knew she was gay. And or, this is in we, third or fourth This is like, you, he acted like a girl. Or he always played with the girls. Or he was yes. always hanging around with the girls, right? Yes. Yeah. And so I said that to my mom. I'm like, so even there, it, it, we knew. Right. So it's like, how did, you know? So my mom was like, that's very interesting. Like, you're right. I never thought about it. So, and my we, mom's a different generation. My mom's 60. Yeah. And that's so dope that y'all can have that conversation. Really dope. Because we knew as kids, queer kids growing up, we knew we were different, but we were Normally, we were called a faggot, a sissy, a homosexual. Mm -hmm. We didn't know what that was, but we were labeled that at a very young age. And we didn't even know what that was. And the world was labeling us or our family was labeling us. So, you know, I think a lot of people can relate to that. And especially with the holidays right now, right? Like, you see the memes going around. It's the hashtag, you know, Black at Thanksgiving or whatever. And it was like the auntie who always brings her friend. (laughs) Right? So it's like. Yeah, these markers in black family, black culture that we know, but we don't want to talk about. It's still not accepted. It's still Mm -hmm. taboo. Mm -hmm. It's it's a very interesting dynamic. It is interesting because if we know it, why not allow people just to live their lives, their true, authentic, honest lives? Especially if we if we know it, and I think for a lot of people, it just comes down to embarrassment, especially when it comes to the family dynamic. Men in particularly, they're embarrassed, you know, that their sons or that their their cousins or that their nephews are are gay. And and that's where a lot of that comes from. Yeah, for sure. And so I think just that one simple question, it made me think about just how um how I interact, the discourse, the verbiage that I use. I know I, I even said this on your podcast about how I'm sometimes scared to speak on certain things because I I don't want to use the wrong terminology mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. and I'm offending someone and that's not my intent. So right. I whenever I see those things that be getting shared as educational, I'll be like, let me read it right now. <laughs> yeah. And some of it a, a lot of it is is good stuff to digest and process. Mm-hmm. Everything that's being put out there isn't necessarily good or great or factual so you got to filter some of that you know what i mean yeah i think that that's the other key and i think that's with anything right like there's always yes yes there's stuff you got to filter out right (laughs) absolutely absolutely don't get just because it it comes to gays don't get silly (laughs) y'all you still got to do do your your research and your fact checking absolutely for sure now, that was another question you asked me on my pod, on your podcast. Mm-hmm. That this is a very controversial topic for women. I'm gonna say straight women mm-hmm. about: Are you comfortable dating a man who is bisexual? Mm-hmm. And I acknowledged my my toxic thoughts trepidation there. You acknowledged right? the truth. You you yeah. you you were honest and like. The man I want in my life, Booney said, I don't want him to be sucking no dick. That- I did. That's exactly what I said. <laughs> and to me, like, that is, there's nothing wrong with that. Thank you. I really. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you now. <laughs> yes. The, in, the, the flip of this, are you comfortable dating a man who's bisexual who deals with women? Hmm. Huh. You know, most of my experience when it was this kind of scenario, they were DL. It oh. wasn't. Like... <laughs> uh oh. Um. I don't know. I. See, yes, it's... I will say this. I will say this. Yes, I would be open to dating a man who's bisexual. Yes, I I would, and I think that would be interesting. Because I've never dated someone who was openly bisexual. Mm-hmm. I think that would be an interesting experience for me. Yeah. Here's the thing. I've been thinking about this since you said it. Mm-hmm. I honestly feel like, and I want to see if you vibing with me on this. Okay. I kind of 
feel like a man is who, who is bisexual is probably better at sex than a straight man. I don't know if you could say that in the inverse for a gay man. I, I, I don't know if I can because, well, I guess I can't because the thing about this is the thing. Some men that I have talked to or dated in the past have been, like I said, maybe they identified as DL. Mm-hmm. Some men I have talked to or dated in the past have said, you know, I've had sex with women. You know, just because a man is gay doesn't mean that they have not had any sexual experience with a woman True. whatsoever. A lot of gay and queer men have. They Have actually, you? Yes. Really? Yeah. I Listen, y'all can catch me. Pull up the tapes. I'll say in a second, pussy good. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, it is. It is. And I and I definitely but wait a minute, understand. when you say when, I'm gonna let you finish your thought. When you say pussy is good, are you saying it from you tasted it or from feeling it with your penis? <laughs> with my penis. I okay. Yeah. <laughs> I have not ate this ate the cooch yet. That's I gonna I've I have i have been very openly honest about this. Like I would be down for a threesome, but I just I really just can't fathom eating pussy. And I feel like that is an integral part of being gay, right? For like lesbian, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I. You don't want to even. They can do it to me. Yeah. I, I have no problem if a woman wanted to eat my pussy. But not no 69, no. No. <laughs> is it a that's... hard no, Booney? Well, and that's to say, I can't say it's hard, but I can't say it. It would have to be something that I could, the only way I can fathom it happening is if it was something that built. So, excellent like, point. Excellent like, point. I was just thinking that, like, maybe don't just dive in it. That sounds like a lot oh, of Oh, no, I can't dive head first into the pussy. A lot of, no. lot of anxiety, right? So, we're going to take a step <laughs> back, okay? Pussy right there on the bed, but we're not going to dive into it. So, maybe there's some other things. And I, I listen to your podcast, and I love the the sex education that you've been providing I on your platform. I try my best. <laughs> Could you maybe do some other things that wouldn't involve eating snatch, but you would be comfortable? I think my line of comfort, I could do some scissoring. (gasps) Ooh. I think I I would be comfortable with a scissoring situation. Climax. Yes. I don't think I would be comfortable with fingering or eating pussy. Okay. I think that's totally okay. Maybe a little rub on the clit, but I'm not going to go. I can't. I can't. Again, you are establishing boundaries, just like <laughs> you know what I mean. I don't think there's and that's true though. That. Just like when you were on my show, you were like, "Look, E, it's cool, and I understand it, but me personally, I cannot. My man that I'm going to be with, he he's not going to be sucking dick again. I just feel like that's establishing boundaries. And I look, it's probably going to be some people out there that's going to be like, you know what I mean, yes, like all that. Yes. But for me, like, look, everything is not for everybody. But as long as you are respecting other people's boundaries, just like you want people to respect yours, I think that's what's important. I'm nodding a hundred percent in agreement. I am yeah. with, I'm with that. But I do that. That's a um. You said there that a lot of gay men have tried pussy. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm sitting here wondering, too, on the inverse, like, have many, like, gay women, I'm sure, like, tried dick and it was like, 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 what? Okay. Now I'm going back to your experience with pussy. (laughs) Okay. While you were doing it, you, you were aroused. Oh, oh, oh. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> because so, pussy do what it's supposed to do. I mean, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> pussy do what it's supposed to do. <laughs> if you're not aroused with some wet, tight, beautiful vagina, then you're you're just really turned off by women, and you're mm-hmm. probably like really, really gay. But I, I do feel like most people are somewhere on yes. in a gray area, I right? Think like, so too. I don't think you might not act on your feelings towards the opposite sex, but you could be aroused by the opposite sex. 
Absolutely. And I think the sa- exactly the same when it comes to heterosexuals and cis folks, men and women, there's a lot of gray area. And I, you know, and I, and I know for a lot of straight folk being 100% straight right there, like a hundred percent is so important to so many people. But what you just said is ex- what it's exactly the same when it comes to cis people. It's just like, there is actually a lot of gray area. And I mm-hmm. think when it comes to men in particularly, like there are a lot of men out there, ladies, y'all listening. I just want y'all to know you may not want to believe it or you may not want to accept it, but there are a lot of men out there, whether you know it or not, whether they admit it or not, whether they walk in that truth or not, that are attracted to other men. It could be one man, mm-hmm. it could be one man, like, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like a guy could go his whole life not thinking about men or what have you, and they could meet someone one day who just that energy vibe, and they just have that soul to soul connection, and it just it just so happens to be another man. I think that is how a lot of people get fluid, right? Mm-hmm. It's not that they identify as heterosexual or what, whatever. They're not. They identify with what they identify as, but mm-hmm. they meet that person who sparks something, and it they're attracted to that person. Exactly. And you're like, shit, it's a bitch. Or that energy. <laughs> or that energy you know what yeah. I'm saying? Because I really feel like that's what it's about. Because I've uh, definitely seen people I know, don't know, view from afar. Who are and I, I'm also wondering if this is um, an indicator of some of the bullshit that is happening in heterosexual relationships. That I've seen a lot of women start meet a girl, and they're very attracted to that person. They have a good spark with them, and they're in a relationship with that person, and so mm. they don't want to necessarily identify now as bisexual. But they like that person. They like that person. That energy. It's just Mm -hmm. something about that energy. And we're all unique when it comes to our energy. We're all unique when it comes to our light. And I just want us to be open to understanding that we can, that's how we connect with other people and other human beings. And we're, Mm -hmm. you know, and and it's not necessarily like we're not connecting on these like social constructs that have been built over time that are really just, they're not real. But energy is real. Light is real. And I think when we start accepting those things, we can walk in our truth and we can be honest with ourselves. We got to start. We got to be honest with ourselves first before we can be you know, honest with the world. Spot one. Agree. Yes. Now, do you feel as we talk about energy and all this shit, Mm. do you feel that sometimes it's about a fuck? You need a fuck. It's not really the relationship ain't needed. It's just the fuck is needed. <laughs> Absolutely, because I feel like two things can exist. You know, we we can crave intimacy mm-hmm. on a relationship level, something that's more long term, something that we're building or we have some long term goals that we can establish or we can build with another person. And then absolutely, yes, we all get horny. You know what I mean? Well, let me not say that because there's all different types of identities and sexualities out there. Not everybody gets horny or the idea of horny that we're we're talking about here. But a lot of us get horny. A lot of us, you know, sometimes we we crave intimacy, but on a temporary level. And I think that's mm-hmm. totally okay. No, I But definitely... still, you know, have have healthy boundaries and communicate like... what your needs are. I'm literally going to be serious. And I was talking about this last week a little bit on Instagram, like on Talk to Booney Tuesday about yes. how long people had gone without sex. Mm-hmm. And what is a drought out here? A sexual drought. Oh, significant amount of people said a year <laughs> plus. Let yes. me tell you something. I did a year without sex one time in my life and by choice because sister girl was like in a relationship and opened myself and was vulnerable and it fucked me up when it ended. Oh, wow. I said, I have to take sex out of this. So I went all of 2016, no sex. Okay. I will never do that shit again. Okay. Let me tell (laughs) (laughs) 
It just seems like more stress than what we need. Yeah, in it, it did not give me the enlightenment I felt like. And so I felt like I was depriving myself. I am somebody who, when I want to fuck, I want to fuck. Yeah. And not all the people that you are sometimes sac- you are physically compatible with are you emotionally compatible with. Absolutely. And so yeah. I think we have, we, I, I really feel like we've been put in a position where we romanticize relationships and love. And it, that is the goal in this golden ticket. But sometimes the physical yeah. is needed and it's just as important. Listen, what they what what is that old saying? Like, you don't pay a hoe to show up, you pay her to leave, or you pay them uh-huh. to leave. And it's just like sometimes we need that temporary intimacy. Yeah. Um and we use that, and I think what we have to understand is that we use it for all different different things. Some people use it as an outlet for stress. You know, some people are on a journey trying to figure out, well, what do I like? What don't I like? People are at different stages of their life and they're using that. But again, I think it's just important as long as we're communicating our needs and our wants and we establish those boundaries, we're good. I agree. I feel like as long as, because I feel like too, you, you tell me on your side, on my side, I feel like a lot of times women, it's like some filter, right? Like in, it goes in your ears because you hear it. But when it gets start getting in your brain, it don't process exactly what you heard. Like it's a filter and you you heard, you made up what you heard. And it's mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. sis, when he's saying, I'm not looking for anything, <laughs> you know, too heavy. I want to keep it light. I'm looking for something casual. That means fucking. And but the problem being, he, he be throwing hit that thrust be de- on demon time because he was looking for fucking. <laughs> but Booney, don't game be dick. magnificent. You're right. Okay, when the sex is good, it's really hard to deny that like attraction getting a little bit stronger. That attraction could be just simply I want to fuck them more, or it could be like I'm starting to have feelings for this person. But when the sex is good, the sex is good. When the sex is good, it's, it's hitting, right? And, like, I feel like it took, like, I don't always, push, like, you know, people say women can't um, fuck without emotion. Mm. I, be- I, I don't, I used to really subscribe to that. Yeah. But now I don't know if I do. I do think it's more of what you said, right? Like, sometimes that you just want that physical connection, right? I really don't think it for everybody, it becomes this whole intertwining of the hearts, right? Like, because no, I'm also somebody yeah. who does not believe in soul ties and all that bullshit, but got you, got you. <laughs> like, you, I do you think there's an energy. You want. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which I do believe are. there's yep. energy there, but I don't believe that. Uh, I kind of believe that's propaganda for women to <laughs> well, it, it, <laughs> get caught it, it, up in those situations. It, it, it's it's rooted in misogynoir. Mm-hmm. I think us as in humans and, and as people, especially women, are absolutely intelligent enough to identify and, and separate what they want, their needs from their wants. And we're able to, you know, whether we want to admit it or not, we know when there's a change. Mm-hmm. We know we're becoming more attracted to someone than what the, the original agreement had, <laughs> had, had was written. You know what I'm saying? Like, Sometimes we do get caught up in these relationships or in these like one night stands where we, we, or friend with benefits. I just had an episode about that. You did. (laughs) Cause see, here's the thing. I definitely have been in a situation before. Am I, am I in one now? Uh, Where the physical (laughs) is flames. But way. I don't necessarily see any future, right? Gotcha. I think the person is a great friend. Uh-huh. Um, the orgasms be hidden. And Has, he's a good person. Have you communicated these feelings? Oh, <laughs> not. I love your face, yo. <laughs> 
how does does he feel that way or is it more or less like where do you where do you see this other do, person i do feel like now it's two people okay i'm gonna stick with this person i feel like this particular person it's mm-hmm. more like um i do feel because we we do vibe really well and it is it's really and it's rare because this person is an earth sign and i'm a sagittarius so hey, come on earth signs <laughs> Team earth so signs. normally my fire scorches earth the sometimes earth. right mm-hmm. and so he's been able to keep up with mm-hmm. and it's a good energy now you when like i hit that, don't you that he can keep up with you like wait he can actually keep up with me what's, what's yeah because i've had an earth sign before who mm-mm, you scorched. Burned that whole shit up. <laughs> Ashes. Dust to dust. Literally. Um, <laughs> and so here it's like it really, it really is good. But I've I've been proud of myself in the sense of that, like I haven't created this fairy tale or wanting more just mm-hmm. because the shit physical, is real good. Yeah. Cause I've See? been there, done that. <laughs> Right. We, I think we all, yeah. And you live and you learn. And now, like I said, you, you know now. Like, you're like, all right, this shit is like real good. But as far as the future goes, mm. but I am wondering, I wonder, I know how he feels. Cause I know the pussy probably real good, real, real good. <laughs> Look, I'm putting my he, hood on. <laughs> okay. And I know he is like, mm. listen, I'm going to say this because I just, I was telling somebody this is not prepared, but like I was talking to this one guy. He was like, you always curve me. And I'm like, no, I'm not curving you because the only thing I know you are interested in is fucking me. And a lot of that's niggas want to fuck me. Yeah, so I'm exactly. like, and that's and that's not a flex. So you got to hook my attention with something else because yeah. that's just not yeah. going to do it. And so this some um, this person we had had dealings. This is a gazillion years ago at this point. But I recently texted them for something really quick. And they wrote back. <laughs> oh, shit. What'd they say? It was like, did you figure out how to bottle that pussy and send me a complimentary six pack? And I was like, oh, my God. And I was like, nope, this pussy done gone stale. They were like, whatever. I still take a two liter. <laughs> See? Booney, you out here, you can't be doing these guys like that. Like, you can't That's- be whipping that thing on them. Now, now, when I go for it, we go full gusto. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna ask you this. Okay, what's your perfect dick? Mm, like, you want me to describe it? Yes, describe your perfect dick. Mm. Well, it definitely includes the balls. Ah, okay, include the balls. Like, definitely like some nice balls. Like, they don't hang too low. But they but... Some hang time for some tea bagging, you know, or some some other you know fun fun things that we can do. Um, some nice balls to you know compliment the beautiful black penis. Um, yes, seven is cool. Eight is beautiful. <laughs> Nine is. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> we can just look at it, <clears throat> and we can admire it. Um, but nah, I'm 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 really like I'm. It's yeah, seven to seven is good, Booney. But I mean, what were you about to say? I, I want to know. I was, what... I was gonna say for me, for, you, <laughs> yes. for me, mm-hmm. no, a nice seven eight. I'm with. I have been with a dick that's been too big, and whew, it's a lot. Um, but I like a nice girth. I also like vein, a vein. So Come a on. Nice vein, a nice vein on the top. <laughs> like, you want one good one or do you want long, like a couple? It's, if it's one good one on the top. Like running down that top. Like a fucking Snickers bar. <sighs> you know how the Snickers bar, like, yes. you saw it. Lord help us. Um, I see. Yeah. It. I'm, I'm with you. Chocolate. <laughs> happy. Right. Yes. When it's hard, it looks like it's on hydraulics because it's, you know, you know the... It's beautiful. It's a like, yes. it's a house to it. Have you ever seen a dick? To yes, your- I have. <laughs> God went off when he made dick. I am so- 
these niggas can be so raggedy. I don't even care because dick be hitting. I, you know, people, I, I don't know what it is. Like, I see stuff on Twitter sometime where it'd be like, if I could go back, if I wasn't gay, if I could make a choice, I'd be straight. Fuck that. No. <laughs> No, I would never change the fact I love men, particularly black men. Black men are so beautiful all around the world, all shades. Me too. All continents, black men and black women are just so beautiful to me. So beautiful in the body, the physique, you know, the everything about a black man. I just, I love the smell of a black man, how they carry themselves, the mm. swag. No one can match. No one on earth can match the swag of a black man at all. Oh, and black yeah. people just got that juice. We got that, we got that fire. We, we, we are the chosen people. So it's we just are. something about us. And I just, I, I love us. I love us. Now, do you have a description of the perfect man? Like for you? Yeah, maybe. maybe He's going to have, he, he definitely has like a low cut. Like he has a fade. I don't okay. think he has like hair. Okay. You know, my guy's got hair. I got hair. I feel like that guy for me that would. He's not going to have hair. He's going to have like a low cut Caesar with the deep waves. He's going to have a fade. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's going to be like my height, like five eight five nine. Okay. And he's going to be fully verse. Because. <laughs> Come on here, God. The way this bedroom is set up. Uh, uh! Fully verse. Um, <laughs> now, okay, for somebody who's listening and they don't know what that is, can you just say what that is? Yeah, verse. It's just so you know. As far as like sexual positions, we have um, top, which means you just give dick. You have bottoms who take dick, and you have verse, which a lot of tops and a lot of bottoms be trying to deny us, but we <laughs> hear, we hear, and we and we be proud about it. <laughs> Um, team verse but no like verse just means you like both you like to receive so, and you like to give and i'm particularly good at both like so. talk your shit <laughs> now if you had to pick though do you prefer mm -hmm. one or you just really like the switch up i like the switch up because like well if i prefer anything it's probably to top because i do that more because the the it's like a craving you know, so, the it comes on like it's like ding, like it, it it like comes on and like when I want some dick, I want some dick. Like so, <laughs> I'm gonna ask that. Like so, in your um, export, like how did that work? Is that discovery? Is it trial or error? No, because usually when you meet guys, especially for the first time, you talk about that. You know what their position is. Okay. And a lot of gays, unfortunately, do the terrible, Not well, let me rephrase that. A lot of gays like to assume your position. Just to say, well, a lot of heterosexuals do that based mm -hmm. on your behavior. So if you're more feminine, they assume you're a bottom. If you're more masculine, more aggressive, they assume you're a top. And tricks are for kids <laughs> that is not the way that this thing works <laughs> that is hilarious um it's funny because i never thought about that yeah yeah actually yeah very yeah. i feel like gay people y'all have way more fun like sexually y'all <laughs> do I mean, because here's the problem and you deal with black men but I do feel like black men, especially straight black men, mm. are very close minded sexually. And I'm I a, feel a, like to them being freaky is, oh, I ate your pussy. And that to me is not a freak. So when you yeah. try to introduce things or try new things, oh, let's put this toy. Let me blindfold you. Oh, let me tie your hands up. Let's use mm. a candle. Let's get mm. this feather. Mm. All of these things, right? Yeah, we'll that this. that kind of shit throws something. Yeah, and it's like mm -hmm. it's a fucking feather, my nigga. Like, what do you think I'm doing? 
niggas be tripping. Some of y'all <laughs> don't want to do. Some of y'all don't even want to do shit with your woman because you think it's gay, even though you're doing it with your woman. Like, how can it be gay if you're doing it with your woman? And it's just like, some of y'all don't even want to wash y'all ass. Y'all don't want. Y'all don't even want nobody to touch your butt. You flinch up. You be ready to fight if somebody grabs your butt or touches your butt. What's wrong? Are y'all okay? They're not. They're traumatized over some shit that ain't even happen. Because I will be getting. I I literally have had that happen so many times with men that like if I am massaging or doing, I will say. I'm gonna touch a butt, but I'm not gonna go in it. Like I'll, I'll make some disclaimer so he's yeah, so you relaxed. Don't like, jaw. yeah, like, like I'm not put. I'm not <laughs> gonna do that because I, you know, believe in consent, and I think that goes right. like, do men not That's believe important. in consent? Right? Like, <laughs> they don't because they can't call. They do whatever they want to do. So you think, <laughs> in the one moment you're vulnerable, that someone's gonna stick a nine inch dildo up your butt? Like, calm down. Keyword vulnerability, and I think that's the problem outside of sexual. When it, we can include sex, but even outside of sexuality, in in the bedroom, straight men, straight black men, particularly, have an issue with vulnerability, and mm-hmm. we got to get y'all in therapy. We got to get y'all in some group sessions, whatever it takes. Like, listen to the booty breakdown, whatever it takes. Put on some hunger podcast episodes. Like, we need some healing out here. Like, y'all. Definitely. And let me ask you this. I got I to acknowledge this, though, because a lot of straight black men that I talk to say it's because of the women that they date. Well, now, I will say I do think women play a part in this as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I.e., we just talked about Twitter. You see the tweets like he gay if he put if he drank orange juice or pulp. Like, what? He can't even drink orange uh-huh. juice. Right. So it's like <laughs> these arbitrary things that if a man, a straight man does this, then they're gay. Yeah. And I feel like women do play a role in perpetuating some of those um, stereotypes. Sure. And mm-hmm. and uh, so thus black men are like, uh, I got to be bottled up. I can't <laughs> want to protect that identity. They love women. They only want to date women. And I get it. I'm not even a straight man, but I like I get where some of that insecurity or just not maybe not even insecurity of just like wanting to protect your quote unquote manhood because you day women you love women and mm-hmm. you you and I, I don't know what that's like but i'm sure you know men want to be revered a certain way in the community particularly the black community and particularly their black ass families black men want to be revered a certain way they want to be respected a certain way they want to be acknowledged a certain way and it's like <sighs> in order to get all those things y'all, y'all gotta come a little better though you gotta give a little bit more you gotta you gotta, you gotta come a little better because i'd be willing but sometimes these fools don't be coming correct and so yeah yeah we got some healing to do bro we yeah. do as a whole. All right. So I liked your, um, I'm going to remember that for the perfect dick. You included the balls. Oh, balls is very important. Yeah. Because to me, you don't get, it's just like when you, when you buy, let me ask you this. When you buy dildos, don't it come with a little set of fake balls? It's a package deal. Yes. Yeah. yeah you don't never just buy the dick, right? Oh, no, 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 no. Sometimes, right? They're they're I, like just they dick. have some that do, but for the mass, like most of them do though. They have a ball with it because it's it's a package deal. Just I mean, it. I like I like a little ball that got some swing. Do you do anything to the balls? Like I'll suck or, a ball or two. And they don't. <laughs> they, they be like, ah! Yeah, it's funny. It, it, it's it, you gotta when you start moving certain areas, you gotta start narrating. I'm now gonna go. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I love the narration. Let y'all know it's safe. Y'all good. That's it. You just got narrate sometimes when you start moving a little lower. I'm only gonna stop right here. But um <laughs> like you a flight attendant. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Put the seatbelt on, nigga. It's gonna be okay. Buckle up. It's a fun ride. Okay, well, let's here's the thing. The, um, exit row, or what's that row where you gotta, you know, where you get the extra leg room? You be all right. Uh, Chill out. Yeah, like you're fine. So I, I do say this, like, I feel like a lot of people want to seize the dick, but it's the whole, it's a lot of red tape sometimes dealing with men and their penises. 
It really? is. Really? I do. I do. I feel like, and I think too, okay, so let me ask you this, because I feel like the scales are tilted right now in the straight world where men have now become the prize. Mm. And um, they really believe that they are the prize. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I'm having some, you know, <laughs> trepidations there. <laughs> yes yeah it's like really um yeah it's just very (laughs) tilted like i just don't feel like the dating scales are tilted in the straight world these days and so thus for me for a minute i had only been seizing the dick because i just Mm -hmm. i couldn't deal with the the emotions of the heart (laughs) yes but i'm gonna i'm gonna do better i'm gonna do better that's my pledge yeah 2022 it's the same over here, Booney, for sure. And I think dealing with men, and then you have two men in one situation or a relationship, it can just get real, like, <sighs> two stubborn-ass goats. And and that's why a lot of our relationships, you know, end after a few hours is because, like... Hours? Niggas don't be, like, as soon as something happens, as soon as something piss you off, or something don't go your way, or what have you, like... That patience is not there. They out of there. They're out of there. They're on to the next situation because for a lot of men, that's what they see is like, I got a catalog of motherfuckers. I got it. It's either for you, I got a catalog of bitches. For me, I got a catalog of niggas. And it's just like, you know what I'm saying? And it's just uh, for a lot of men, they want to keep their options open. I don't care if you're talking about straight men, if you're talking about gay men, a lot of men just want to keep their options open. And, and that go, and that, now what you're saying makes even more sense about men feeling like they are truly the prize. Mm-hmm. They do men do not want to commit until they are 78 years old and they are for sure that this is the person they didn't, they don't went through everybody. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I like, look, 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 look. I'm not can't wait that long. Then your dick shriveled up. It's not working. Like, cause dick, I mean we pretend that the physical does not matter as much as it does and it does and so i am under the guise that whenever i settle down and i'm with my person and hopefully it lasts a long time i still want to be fucking when we 70 something Ooh. like i do i i want to always be able to look at my man and want to rip his clothes off like yes. i just always want to i i don't care how old we are i still want to be fucking as long as my mind and body will allow me to i want to with my person i know that's right and so don't be trying to settle down with me now it's all broke down and worn out <laughs> no <Nah>, buddy <laughs> well, i don't know i'm seeing the instagrams and stuff y'all bagging them look it's happening i don't know like uh, y'all better go ahead i love it y'all out here family okay creating family (laughs) look one day one day one day all right look we're gonna go to the breakdown so i'm gonna say a word Mm -hmm. and you're gonna say the first thing that comes to mind all right let's go it could be a word sound phrase whatever okay First one, black women. Goddess. Philly. Cheesesteak. Maxwell. Mm, Oh my God, so much shit just went through my head. (laughs) (laughs) Like so much shit. Him in that fucking pool, that hair, those abs. (sighs) <sighs> Maxwell, okay. that's a man. That's a man. That is a man. I Nine get inches. Uh, well, goddamn, that's a beautiful <laughs> penis. That's a beautiful penis. Dating sucks. Fleets. <laughs> <laughs> Are no longer available on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> and last one, Target. Mm, take all your damn money. Take all the money. Okay. All of it. All of it. Uh, 
All right, Eric, I need you to tell everyone where they can find you on the internet, on social media, where they can listen to your podcast. Plug, plug, plug. Thank you, Booney. This was so dope. I really enjoyed this as always. And I hope that you'll have me back because I really just like talking. This is just like we on the phone, like just and just talking, shooting the shit and talking. <laughs> so, I'm your boy, Eric Cole, the host and the producer of the Hunger Podcast, a Philly based culture and society podcast from a black queer perspective. You can find the show on your favorite podcasting and your favorite social media platform. By searching at Hung Up Pod. That's H U N G U P P O D. All right. I'll be sure to link all of that in the show notes and on the booneybreakdown.com. Be sure to follow Eric. And thank you so much. This was good. This was real good. It was so good to see you. And I can't yes. wait to talk to you again, Booney. I'm so hung up. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Peace. Good night. All right, that is it for this week's episode. Again, I want to thank our guest, Eric of the Hung Up Podcast. Be sure to support and follow him on social media and check out his podcast. Also support our sponsor, Goli Vitamins. You can use the code Boonie Breakdown to save 10% on your future orders. And the coupons can be stacked, so you can get a lot of savings there. And if you enjoyed this episode, I encourage you to listen and subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, YouTube, or any app that you listen to your favorites on. Don't forget to leave those five-star reviews, too. You might just hear your review on the future episodes. Follow us on all social media. Share the episode with those you love, those you don't love, those you fucking hate. I don't make these pretty images for nothing, okay? Have a dope-ass week. Stay healthy, safe, and sane. Thank you for listening. And remember, the ratchet in me always honors the ratchet in you. Ho, my stay. Until next time.